Jesus has truly changed my life and I would not want it any other way. Drop it in the water, let the daughter find an image. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Akuna, but I go by Kunta K and I do beauty, faith, fashion, and lifestyle videos on all my platforms. I've never actually done a sit-down video like this, but this is gonna be the first of many on this channel. If you clicked on today's video, you probably saw the title. Today I'm gonna be sharing my testimony with you guys on how I came to Christ and how I just committed my life to Jesus and how my life has never been the same since. So before we begin, I just want to pray to answer this video on to pray and also i can feel myself getting nervous i don't know why i'm nervous i feel like i'm just talking to myself so hello we rebuke the spirit of fear because the bible says what he has not given me a spirit of fear but of love power and a sound mind hello so we we cast that spirit out anyway lord jesus father god i just thank you lord that i'm able to share my testimony today lord jesus i thank you god that you've given me the privilege to be a vessel of your glory lord jesus father i thank you for the ability lord jesus to share of your goodness lord your kindness and your faithfulness oh jesus father god as i create this video lord may you guide my lips lord jesus holy spirit take control and speak through me lord jesus father touch the hearts of your daughter as and son lord jesus and may this video glorify you in the name of jesus we pray amen amen let's get into it if you guys catch me looking down i'm looking at my phone because i just want to make sure everything i'm saying is in an organized and cohesive manner all right let's begin so let's just give some background so you guys can fully understand this for those that do not know i am nigerian i'm Igbo, and i actually grew up attending a catholic church i attended an Igbo catholic church my entire well, not my entire life, but majority of my life. One of the biggest influences on my faith was my grandmother. My grandmother was a devout Catholic. When I say devout, I mean she was devoted. She would literally have us do a rosary every single day. Her herself would do rosary almost five times a day. When we had summer break, we would go to morning mass with her every blessed morning. You didn't have a choice. You just had to go with her. One of my core memories is... She would always read us bedtime Bible stories. We weren't reading like Jack and Jill and those giants that flew up somewhere. No, we were reading Bible stories every night. And I feel like that affected me so much more when I came to Christ because I realized a lot of these stories that I was hearing in the Bible, like in the Old Testament, I had already known of, but I realized it was because my grandmother was feeding me with this at a young age. Even on the weekends, we were not allowed to watch any kind of TV except Christian TV shows up until like 12 p.m. in the afternoon. And those shows impacted me so much. Like I remember there's one show called the donut man where they would sing this song like that goes second corinthians 5 17 and it would now just sing that verse and i realized when i came to christ like wait like i know that verse and it's because of that show that i watched when i was younger so due to my religious background i always had very strong morals growing up like i would be that one kid out of all the kids in my middle school to say like i'm not having sex until i'm married and people would look at me like huh and but i was so confident and bold that like i was like no i'm just not having sex until i'm married like that's it <laughs> now when i graduated middle school that summer between eighth grade to freshman year of high school was a very reflective summer and i just thought i was becoming wiser and i had the grand idea to not date all my four years of high school but little did i know that was the holy spirit speaking to me but at that time i knew of god yet didn't know him intimately so i didn't know that was the holy spirit the Holy Spirit had helped me rationalize that it made no sense whatsoever for me to date within my four years of high school because naturally I know myself. I'm a lover girl. I love love. And I know that if I entered any kind of relationship, I would naturally pour out my heart to whoever I'm with because that's just who I am. But if you live in New York, you know high school relationships do not last. Like if you actually live in New York, and this may not apply to everyone, some relationships do last, but for the majority, a grand 98.9% High school relationships do not last, so if I entered a relationship, I would be entering solely for the purpose of heartbreak. So when I had told certain people this, some would say, wow, Akuna, you're very mature for your age, like you're very wise. Some others would say, Akuna, what about experience with dating and stuff like that? Da -da -da. Who experience go help? Who experience go No, let me ask you, who experience go help? Especially in high school, that experience is not needed. I rationalized that it made no sense to get emotionally involved with others, knowing that this would not lead anywhere. Because I've always said, from a young age, my end goal is marriage. And obviously, I don't think it makes that much sense to date for marriage while in high school, because I don't think those relationships really last. Disclaimer, this does not apply to everyone. This was solely what the Holy Spirit told me, not you. Apply it if it makes sense. And I always say, one of the greatest ways I know that God loved me was for the fact that he told me not to date all my years of high school because I feel like it saved me so much emotional pain and trauma and hurt. If not for God telling me this, I know for a fact I would have entered into meaningless, lust-filled relationships that had no actual goal in mind. 
I would have probably gave my body to boys who did not deserve this body that God actually created. I also probably would have been emotionally damaged and carried on trauma from premature relationships into adulthood and carrying that brokenness now. But God instead decided to shield me. I always say that God preserved me for telling me this. So now when I entered high school, there was now a turning point. Though I did stick to the idea of not dating all my four years, I slowly realized that due to the school I went to, which was very secular and... I don't even want to talk about that school because it was it was so bad but because i attended that school i realized how i slowly began to compromise in my morals but that was because i did not have the foundation of christ i had a foundational knowledge of him but not a foundational knowledge of knowing him intimately my answer slowly began to change to questions i remember someone asking me so when are you gonna have sex something like that and i slowly changed my answer from marriage now being like maybe when i'm 18 or something like that oh jesus after attending my first year of high school at that very worldly school i ended up transferring schools as i was in my new school it just came to a point where i realized i don't think the way i'm living actually honors god like though i say i know god by lips i do not actually know him i realized that i was also relying on my works for salvation rather than faith i remember during lent if you don't know what lent is it's like a catholic period time period in time where you fast for 40 days and 40 nights similar to what jesus had done in the desert and during that time you're required to give something up for god i remember giving up something that i was struggling with but i realized like i was relying on myself to give this thing up and i slowly fell back into that sin like it, it, it didn't make sense because i was relying on my own power and not the power of the holy spirit I remember around August 2019, I was watching like all the UK YouTubers and I think I was watching one of Nella Rose's videos and I think it was one of those videos where it was like, what do boys find attractive or something like that. Yeah, I know one of them dumb videos and I think one of the boys was like, oh, girls with a relationship with God. I said, wait, hold on, like, should I have a relationship with God? But I thank God the Holy Spirit cautioned me and stopped me at that moment because my heart was in the wrong place for desiring a relationship with God. I almost wanted to have it so that men could like me, but I thank God that did not happen. But a couple weeks later after that, I slowly began watching Michael Todd's sermons. Now, I know he has a lot of controversy, right? But this is back when he was really good. Back then, he actually helped me so much when it came to my walk with Christ. Now, I'm not too sure about that, but he helped me a lot back then. And I know many can relate to that. Now, in September 2019, I actually bought my first Bible. And funny enough, guys, I did not have enough money to buy my own Bible. I had no job. I was only receiving allowance from my mom. And even the allowance, I did not have enough money to buy the Bible so i actually borrowed money from my younger sister to buy that bible god bless her now because i never i never paid her back but it paid off because look at me now <laughs> but over this time i was slowly beginning to actually seek god i was reading my bible not consistently but i would read it here and there i would do bible plans on the bible app and those are actually helping me but it was truly during quarantine that i sat down and said i want to intentionally spend this time building my relationship with god i knew at the time i had almost nothing to do school I was not doing much inside school. Online school was not real school. Besides that, I was at home creating Snapchats the entire day. Like I was like, you know what? Let me set my time and do something wise with it. And of course, the Holy Spirit showed me, let's work on our relationship. I remember around that time, I had such a hunger for the word of God. I would literally spend every morning watching sermons as I'm eating my breakfast. Even at the time, a lot of my friends that I went to church with, my Catholic church with, also gave their lives to Christ. So we now began our own personal Bible study. Every blessed day, we would do Bible study together. And I just saw how God was really growing me during this time. And I believe I gave my life to Christ sometime within March 2020. But the day I really used to commemorate my journey with Christ is April 12th, 2020, which was Easter that year. I remember listening to this one message by Pastor Mike on Easter. And I think it was just about the whole idea of repentance and just making a bold statement of no longer turning back and following God alone. And I think that was the day that I said, no, I seriously from now on will truly follow Jesus and not look back. And ever since then, God has, per when I say perfected my life, this God has perfected my life in ways I could not have imagined. If not for giving my life to Jesus, I don't know who I'd be right now. I always tell my sisters, I don't know the woman I'd be. The person you see standing right here would not be the woman that you guys see if not for the work that Jesus has done in my life. Jesus has given me joy. He's given me peace. He's given me identity. I remember last week, I had asked the Holy Spirit, Lord, when did I actually fully come into the knowledge of my identity? And the Holy Spirit had showed me, Kuna, it was actually the year that you turned 19. For those that don't know, I'm only 20 years old right now. I'm turning 21 in November. But that was the year that God showed me that that's when you actually came into your identity. That's when you fully walked in who you were meant to be. I used to be a people pleaser. I used to care about the opinions of others so bad and jesus has now showed me what it looks like to live life in freedom away from the opinions of others and solely living a life for him he's given me liberation freedom 
as I've come to know Jesus, I've come to know myself even so much more. And I've gained so much confidence that is not rooted in my personal looks or the fact that I'm Nigerian, but it's rooted in this foundation of Christ that will never move and is unshakable. On top of that, y'all, God has given me an everlasting and unconditional love. When I think of the love that God has for me, it almost brings me to tears. Like, Jesus, you love me so much. I remember posting on my Instagram a couple days ago, just thinking about the sacrifice of Jesus. And I'm like, God, what kind of God are you that when the Bible says that the greatest thing, the greatest act of love is to die for a friend and Lord, you died that for me. Then the following verse now says, I no longer call you servants, but I now call you friends. What the heck? Like, Lord, who am I that you even consider me a friend? I've realized with Jesus, I do not feel alone. I do not feel lonely. I even feel more comfortable being alone because I'm always talking to the Holy Spirit in my head. Like sometimes I literally burst out and say, Holy Spirit, I love you so much. Like, I don't know what I'd be doing without you. I would feel so empty. I'd probably be depressed. Like I would not have joy. Jesus has just truly changed my life and I would not know what to do without him. And I cannot wait to share with you guys so many more lessons that the Holy Spirit has given me over the past couple of years that I've been saved. And I pray they will truly impact your lives. This is only a small glimpse of my walk with God, but over the past years, God has taught me so much regarding priority, obedience, submitting and surrendering to him and what it looks like to have joy in the midst of suffering. God has taught me so much. And every day I walk up feeling purpose filled. Like I wake up and say, Holy Spirit, what are we doing today? Like, what do you want me to do today? And I, and I just feel so overjoyed. Like God is so, so, so good. So I want to end off this video by praying for two kind of people. The first person is those that want to give their lives to Christ, but feel like something is holding them back. Whether it be the fear of feeling like you're unworthy, whether it be the opinions of others, it could be doubt, the lack of faith, or even the resisting mind. Something within you is resisting Jesus. I want to pray for you first. Father God, I just want to pray, Lord Jesus, for your children, Lord God, who desire you, but something is holding them back, oh Jesus. Father God, whether it be doubt, the lack of faith, oh Jesus, the resisting mind, oh God. Father, may your children come to understand and experience your love that surpasses all understanding, oh Jesus. Father, may they come in contact with your joy, oh Jesus. Lord, may they know you intimately, oh God. Father, whatever that is holding them back, oh Jesus, we break that thing in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, may you begin to minister into the hearts of your daughters and sons, Lord Jesus, that they may come to know you and say, Lord, you've all, you've been the thing I've been looking for my entire life, Lord Jesus. That I've been trying to fill my heart, Lord Jesus, with substances, Lord Jesus, with men, Lord Jesus, with girls, with women, Lord Jesus. Yet I've never truly known peace, Lord Jesus. But Father God, may they experience peace when they finally come to know you. May they experience peace when they finally come to know you, O oh Jesus. Lord, whether it be the opinions of others, O oh Jesus, Father, may they prioritize their peace, their joy, and their salvation over the opinions of others. And as they prioritize that, Lord Jesus, they will find themselves seeking you and prioritizing you first because you alone are the giver of peace. You alone are the giver of joy, Lord Jesus, and you alone fill us with love, O oh God. Lord Jesus, may you help your daughters and sons give their lives to you fully and say, I will never go back. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, the second kind of person I want to pray for is for those who want to give their lives to Christ, but are scared to give up the way that they live their lives. You may be saying, I want to give my life to Jesus, but I don't want to give up these certain things. I want to give my life to God, but I don't want to change whatsoever. I just want to say a prayer for you. Lord Jesus, I just want to pray, Lord God, for your daughters and sons, Lord Jesus, who want to seek you, Lord God, but are scared to give up the way that they live, Lord Jesus. Father, may your children come in contact with you, Lord Jesus, and gaze upon your face and not your ability to change them, O oh Jesus. Lord, may they come to know you intimately and not focus on what you have the capability to do within them and the ways you may change them, but instead, Lord God, may they fall in love with you. May they submit their lives to you, Lord Jesus, and let you do the work after, O oh God. Father, may they fall in love with you first, O oh Jesus. Lord, may you change their hearts, O oh God. Father, may they not be so concerned with the changing of their lives, O oh God, but instead, Father, may they be consumed with your glory, O oh Jesus. May they be consumed with your love, O oh God. And Lord, may they just know you. Because when they know you, the thought of giving up anything won't even matter anymore, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray that anything that is holding them back, O oh Jesus, may you remove those things in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of God, we pray. 
Amen. 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 If you want to give your life to Christ after watching this testimony, or even just after hearing many people give their lives to Christ, and you're like, you know what? I want to actually do this thing. I really want to invite Jesus into my life. I have a quick prayer for you to say. So you guys can repeat after me. I'm going to read it. Dear God, I know I have sinned and that my sin separates me from you. I'm sorry for my sin. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me so my sins can be forgiven. I believe Jesus rose from the dead and is alive. God, please forgive me. I ask Jesus to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I will obey you, follow you, and honor you. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I just want to say I'm so proud of you, but most importantly, God is looking at you and he is so proud he's literally welcoming you back with open arms the heart of compassion that says my son and my daughter has finally returned back to me he is so overwhelmed and happy and i just want to tell you that giving your life to jesus will never be a mistake it will always be the best thing you have ever done with your life if you're someone who maybe isn't ready to give their life to christ i totally understand take your time but please do remember the time is coming when Jesus will come back again. So we do not have as much time as we actually think that we do. But I promise you, give your life to God and he will change. He will change your life. That depression that you've been facing every single day, he will remove it. Them nightmares you've been constantly dealing with, he will remove it. The trauma and pain that you've been facing over the past couple of years that have limited you and made you become this mute person that God has never created, he will remove that and restore you back to the child filled with joy that he created you to be. Jesus is so good. I promise you, give Jesus a try. Give him a month, and I promise you, he will already begin to change your life. Even three, ah, if God rolls up in three days, he can change your life in less. Come on. So yeah, guys, that is my testimony on how I came to Christ and how Jesus changed my life. If you like this video, please give it a like, comment, subscribe. I promise y'all we got more videos coming like this. Comment below what other kind of videos you'd like to see from me. And yeah, guys, I'll see you in my next video. Kunta K, out. Bye.